Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are doing Down the Garden Path. So, um, let's see, I haven't had a chance to do, I did do more after the video but I haven't had a chance to open it again. Um, I've got that in there because I'm using that uh, to do more since the video. See, I'm in the mid middle of it. I'm doing um, some bullion stitches there. I'm creating a little sort of garden around my my um, fountain. And I was going to put a bird on it, but I'm still thinking about that. I did little bits of water there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of, there's a lot going on, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, and today is the prompt reveal for the next two weeks. So the prompts are tree and or a bird's nest and I say and or because you might want to do a bird's nest as well um, I don't know if I'm going to or not I'm thinking my tree will go over here um, I haven't decided yet how I would do my tree oh yes I have I've had to think about it just let me grab my pin and um, I think my video will probably be a quick one today we might work a little bit on that but I'm I'm, think, I'm just going to actually randomly draw it. I'm going to have half a tree coming up here. And then I'm going to have branches coming out like so. And I'm going to put, I think, felted wool or felt wool leaves. So I'm just doing a vague idea of my tree. Um, there it is there. And have my trunk still like that I think so I'll work it out I might just finish off this bullion stitch here look I've stopped right mid stitch someone must have come and interrupted me so how is everyone today I hope you're well let me just tap you or bring you down closer so you can see there we go um, we are well very busy day yesterday one two three four five six seven eight I might do eight um very very busy yesterday I went to I had to go in to near Florence um to see um this antique dealer and I went with my mother-in-law because she loves to come with me I'll just do a couple more bullion stitches just to show those who don't know how to do them they are a little bit intimidating at first they intimidated me um but if you practice, practice them on a, a scrappy piece of fabric and eventually they click. And we do have, I can't remember what video it was. It was the when we did our sampler in our very first edition, first volume, um, we showed in one of the videos. I think that the stitches are linked, um, not linked, written in the description box of those videos where it's the sampler. Um, I can't remember if I did them or Sarah. We sort of divided the... The job of the stitches between us okay so I'm just random I'm gonna add in some greenery of course so I'm just gonna do another little bit of these and then I'll do some other flower I'm just gonna have it come right across here and I won't go any further there I have my path and my tree so I don't want to go any further there so come up here and then go down below there and then come back to where you I'm just moving the knot where you started and then you wrap your needle however many times you think you need to fill in that little space there I'm doing about seven I think um, and don't hold on to the tail but well actually then put your fingers on there and don't pull it too tight because otherwise you can't see I can't get my needle through let me just put one of these on a gripper that will help see so yeah, I guess I did pull it a little bit tight um, and don't worry look it's messy don't worry and it's like loopy you don't worry you just keep adjusting and pulling adjusting and pulling until you just slide your little wraps up there and there we are we have the stitch and then I'm going to come back up over here so I'm going to leave that poking out no that's not how you do it I've got to go down and anchor it I forget go down and anchor it because I want to be really quick so you've got to go down anchor it and then come up where you want to do your next one we will get back to the tree in a minute okay. 
yes so i went to um actually i went to pistoia and um and he'd been telling me that he because he's the um what do you call it he's the caretaker for this um convent and it's an independent i don't know how it works but it's an independent convent uh, it's an ind independent order of nuns that are separate to the vatican so they're not controlled by the vatican in the sense that you know whatever is their property is their property it doesn't belong to the vatican yay because a lot of stuff belongs to the vatican um and so they're, se they're selling the convent. Anyone got 2.8 million euro, you can buy a huge convent right on the edge of the historical center of Pistoia. 2.8 million euro. Anyone got it? And then, of course, you'll need another gazillion to renovate it and make it into something. And you'll be dealing with the sovereintendence. Sover it's, a, it's a mouthful. Sovereintendenza di dei beni culturali. <laughs> um, because they... Um, Obviously, it's a protected site because it's an old convent. I don't know how old it was. It didn't look like... Well, I don't know. I must ask Beppe how old it was. Um, I really don't know how old it was. But anyway, um, they've had auctions. They've auctioned off a lot of the furniture that was in there. And sort of... There probably were relics and stuff like that. Um, and there were a few things that then the, the, the um, heritage... Um, um, whatever you call it, the like it's called the National Trust in Australia. Um, they they stepped in and they they stopped the auctions because they wanted to just check the last few things, you know, like the value of them, whether they were, you know, they want I don't know what they want, maybe put them in a museum or something. I don't know. They didn't look like they were museum pieces to me, what I saw. But anyway, it was a very plain, simple convent. I mean, beautiful. Um, there weren't there was only the kitchen i mean funny enough the kitchen we couldn't see because there's no electricity but the kitchen had frescoes in it, it had paint well not really were they frescoes yes yeah, some of them were frescoes and some of it was painted um you know wood beams it looked really gorgeous but i couldn't see very well and i didn't take any photographs because it was dark i couldn't see in there um but it was so i went in there with beppe and there was just like you know old textile like not not really fancy textiles, but I think probably those have already gone. But there were lots of like, you know, old antique linen and hemp tea towels and all the nuns, they had been, um, they made their own socks. They were really old socks um, that they had made and they had all in, um, embroidered their initials on the, on the socks, which were, I mean, I nearly, he said I could have a pair of socks if I wanted to, but I, I nearly took them and then I thought, oh, it was all on the floor, it really made. I said to him, you know, you need, re really need to, um, I think, you know, they w would, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I'm like, you really need to get that and clean it and, 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 I mean, and sell it because there's so much stuff there, still so much stuff there. And that's really the dregs that are left after they've taken all the good stuff. So, yeah, but it was fun. I mean, we went in and it had a lovely courtyard. It was a bit overgrown, but they had orange trees and fig trees and and all kinds of things. So it was really super fun. And um, and then he took me to a lovely antique shop there that's tiny, but she had... I've come up the wrong way. It doesn't matter. I'll do it that way because um, I'm chatting. I've, I've forgotten what I'm doing. Um, she had lovely, um, lovely, you know, laces and stuff like that. So that was fun. And, but her shop is tiny, like literally two people could fit in there. But it was gorgeous, just to, just a feast for your eyes. And um, and it was pouring. Oh my gosh! So I left at seven in the morning because it's about a two hour and twenty minute drive, um, normally, with no traffic. But Bologna is notorious for traffic. It's notorious. So it, it normally takes 50 minutes for me to get to the southern part of Bologna, to the very beginning of it. And um, it took two hours to get there. It was, there was an accident somewhere. And so, um, now let me have a think about the greenery. We might get that done. Um, yeah, so it took me two hours to get there, which was incredible. Just let me grab my threads. They're just here, not far. Yeah, two hours to get there, and um, and it was 
pouring with rain. Like, do I ever tell you? When do I ever tell you it's pouring with rain? It never pours with rain, but it was. The visibility was very poor. So I was, I was, you're only allowed to go like the normal speed. Oh, it's raining now. The normal speed limit on the Autostrada is um, 130 kilometers per hour. And um, I'm going to use this darker green because otherwise I love these mid tones here, but I, I tend to use them all the time. So I do need to mix up my greens a little bit. That's why I use dark greens on there. Um, so, but you're only allowed to go 110. Anyone who's driving here, when it's raining, you're only allowed to go 110. Um, and anyway, but of course, nobody, the, I mean, not very many people sort of abide by that. They, they fly down, fly down, they fly. They have some speed on there. But anyway, there was an accident. So it took us double, more than, a little more than double the time to get to, to Bologna. And then um, we have to go all sort of through um, the autostrada cuts sort of through Bologna. And it's all, it's pretty, um, always pretty bad traffic because it goes down to two quite narrow lanes. And the tangentiale is like this side road. When you go off the autostrada, you can go on what they call the, it's like the periphery sort of road. It, um, I can't remember what you call it. And um, that road was just a parking lot. And I was just thinking anybody going to the airport would be hyperventilating, which is why I always am hysterical about the airport here and um, saying you have to leave early. Um, Anyway, so so that we got round Bologna and we, because then you turn off or to Milan or to Florence. So we took the Florence turn off because we were going near Florence. And I mean, literally I couldn't see anything. So we had to drive really slowly and it's full of trucks and the trucks terrify me because they're bullies on the road. Um, and so we, um, <laughs> We got part, there's a whole series of tunnels because you're sort of going over the Apennines and part of the Apennines and so they have all these tunnels. And we came out of a tunnel and there was a car tipped on its side. It said that we had traffic, we did slow down again. It was tipped on its side on, and so the passenger side was all on the road. It was like literally up on its side. And I was, and I was just like, that just made me get chills to see that. I was just thinking, gosh, I wonder if there were passengers in there because they would have been really hurt. And then I was thinking, imagine the driver, how they're just hanging there because he was up at the, he or she, they were up in the air. I don't know if they were still in the car or if they'd gotten them out. I had seen, no, the ambulance I saw on the other part of the autostrada, so that would have been for the Bologna accident. But anyway, it was quite... Um, horrendous the drive and um we didn't get there we left at seven in the morning we should have arrived at like 9 20 we arrived at 10 40 <laughs> so it took a really long time so then we we and then we went with Beth he was so lovely he just took us everywhere and um and and then he insisted on he took us to lunch and he insisted on paying for the lunch and oh we just had a re I mean apart from the terrible drive we really did have a lovely time um, it took about, um, it took very slightly more to get back. There was a little bit of traffic around, um, nearer to Florence when we were heading back. Um, so I was, I'm pretty tired actually. Uh, it took a lot out of me and, um, and so, yeah, so, but it was, it was fun. I had a lot, I had a good time and I did buy a few things from Beppe or, you know, just some hemp, some sort of thing, um, I bought a few hemp's from from the monastery, not the monastery, the convent, and um, and and you know nothing too flash, but fun. I had fun. It was really good, and so um, that was my day yesterday. So I had pre-recorded my video for yesterday, and then. <laughs> And mum, mum is doing Fleur Woods course, and I'm dying to know how she, how she's going with it, because she was so excited, and she rang me when I was in the in the convent, and so I flipped her around on Skype, and I'm like, this, look where I am, mum. I mean, it was pretty dark. I think she probably couldn't see very much, um, because it was also raining there as well, so we didn't have a lot of light. Um, I'm just doing little stitches for my leaves, just you know, next to each other, about three, just to create a leaf idea I mean very simple stitching I'm not doing it too complex because if I do it too complex I'm not going to get it done 
and and so anyway i i'm 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 going to be calling her when i finish this video usually i call her before but i think she might still be coming she's a bit of a chatterbox like me and so she might be she might have been chatting at the end of the course and and not been at home yet when i turned on the camera so i thought i'd better get my video done as i am first this week with the reveal yay um and so um yeah i'll, I'll ring mum afterwards and see how she went so i'm just filling it in with some green emmy green greenery that's a new one isn't it so just add in a few more and i might add i don't know whether i might add little bits of like in here i feel like i could add little you know attach the things to each other put some little stems in there just to fill it in i really do just make it up i'm not looking at anything i'm just doing it. sometimes i look at things to get an idea get a shape maybe you know might not be obvious to me straight away so i will do that sometimes but generally um, I'll have a quick glance at something and I just do my own thing. I really can't follow the rules. It's just the way I am. If someone tells me, um, gives me a pattern, I'll, I'll always go off on a tangent. I don't know what, I'm going to have a little bit, maybe a lower flower sort of coming out here as well. Um, I'm thinking I might do some sort of blue, but I'm, I don't know, I have to decide. Um, I might put a little leaf in there. I kind of wanted it to be a bush, but it's not really exactly what I thought it was going to be. But in the whole scheme of things, when I hang it on the wall up here in front of me, um, you probably won't even notice that it's not exactly what I thought. Come down here and put in, I might put a little bit down here. Maybe try and make it a little bit more bushy. I am very pleased with it. It's not like there are bits that, um, you know, could have been better. But I think that's how we all feel about our work, isn't it? We're always our own worst critic. Um... I feel like there are bits that could have been better, but as I said, in the scheme of things, I don't think you'll notice it. Unless you're one of those people that likes to sort of look at, oh, that's not very good. Oh, I don't like that bit there. I don't know. And you're looking at something. Could be. I'll tell you one thing I did get from the convent. Um, there was a, I think it was a, near the kitchen, there was like this confessional, little, little, um, little door. Um, and I opened it and you can't get, I don't know how they get in there. I don't know how, um, they, the, whoever was in there would get in there. There, there was, there was no door from where we were, how to get in there. And, um, and so there were some right near the little window sort of thing um there were these um rugs rolled up and on 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 top of one of the rugs was a beautiful um i don't know how old it was might not have been that old i don't know um a huge cross stitch with the ihs in it and um and i said to Beppa, what's that what's that i want to see that i want to see that <laughs> So he's, he, he's touched it and just piles and piles of dust have flown up in the air. I mean, we were coughing all the way around. I can't tell you the dust we would have um, taken in. It was just shocking. But um, he pulled it out for me and I bought that. I mean, it was, it, oh, uh, my mother-in-law has it now. She's, she does all the delicate washing for me because she's very good at it. I would, it, I, I get worried things are just going to crumble in my hand. So she's, She's doing all of that for me. I'm, I've got some of the heavier pe 
pieces of linen and stuff i'm washing those i mean it was all on the fl on the floor and rubble sort of thing so not rubble it's not falling apart but it was dirty and there's certainly been pigeons in there because there was pigeon poop everywhere um but it was just oh i just i thought it was so much fun and he'd been telling me for a long time i should have gone he told me last year i should have gone um i think he told me last september and i never went because it's a big trip you know it's a big day trip I've become a bit Italian. Those sorts of things are big day trips. Whereas in Australia, it's pretty normal. And sure, in the, in the States too, it's pretty normal to, to drive a long distance um, to get somewhere because they're big country. And, and Canada, of course, let's not forget Canada is huge. Um, so yeah, I mean, I should be used to the distance, but sometimes I become a little bit Italian and think, oh, that's a big trip. Well, it is a big trip because if you think it's like it would have, I probably would have driven all up over six hours that day. But I had my mother-in-law keeping me alert and checking what I was doing. Okay, so I'll just stop that for now, and we're going to start thinking about this tree. I won't do much of the tree today. I like to do it in my second video. But we need to think about the composition because that's what I normally do in my first video, like figure it out. I could, I think this would be a little bit balanced if I just had a couple of little purple ones shooting out there. So I will do that. Just a few little ones, just there. Just peekabooing out there. So that I will do that afterwards um, off camera. And now I'm going to hop up one second. Just bear with me. Don't get angry. my go-to thread that I like to use um, to do a tree base and I'm thinking I'm going to have maybe have multiple strands and kind of wrap them um, you know couch them so so what I'm going to do is this thread this this needs a, a big chunky needle to thread I don't know if I can thread it like that Oh, yes, I can't. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, that, that's not going to work. Where is my threader here? Got my green there. So, so if I don't do any more of this right now, um, then I will. Um, I will be doing two. I've got to do two pre-recorded videos of this. For this project so I'm, my thought is to just have multiple lengths I don't want to I don't want to do them individually I want to so I'm just going to cut that up there actually I probably should ding dong I should have threaded that I'll thread that one afterwards I'm just going to put them all in you're thinking I'm probably thinking I'm totally mad I'll do it properly this time this is what I think I wasn't going to start today was I well here I am I'm starting I'm going to actually where my branches start I'm just going to have this going in varying lengths through there I don't normally do that when I'm couching I keep my length long and then I'm going to come up next to it so I don't waste my thread and come down here I might just do it uneven because trees I don't think trees are even are they that one needs to I need to put that one through come up next to it because otherwise if I don't come up next to it like um, that whole length again is going underneath and you waste it and you have to keep re-threading which is really annoying and be careful because this is such a big stitch I've got to be very careful not to pull too tight because otherwise it's going to be bending if you know what I mean like this is going to be pulling up like that But look, from that one length, I'm nearly going to get it done. I may just not make it. But I might make it. 
I'm not going to worry too much if I can't end it off because um, I'm going to be couching over and I think I'm going to make it. I'm going to put another stitch in there and I'll be doing the same for the branches, but I just want to get the trunk going. And as I said, I'm going to do my leaves, I feel, with some sort of felted wool or felt. I'm going to put that over there just because, and there we go. And I may even just leave that long and then I'll be stitching it in as I'm couching. And then I need to thread this one. I don't, this is going to be interesting because it's very short. I'll start the couching process so you can see what, what's going to happen. I've got to decide what kind of colour. I think I'll do a dark brown. I've got to try and get this, because I'm a ding-dong. I've got to get that down there. Okay. I make my life difficult. I could have just left it all attached. Excuse me. Come on. Do as you're told. Do as you are told. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Got it. See what I mean? Like if you pull that, look at that. You don't want that. Pull it, pull it out flat. Always check. Always check when you're stitching that you've, you've got it flat. Okay. Oh, I better drink. Finish my smoothie. Two more sips and it's done. Okay. I keep that out because I'll need that. I'll wrap it all up together with those other two colours that I haven't finished with. Um. So. I'm going to choose a, a brown. I do have a brown here somewhere. Um, where has it gone? Brown, where are you? Where are the... Nope, you're not... I can't find it. I'll just grab another one. So, I could use... A regular stranded brown or let me see if I've got anything interesting I don't think I had many browns in here no no browns in that one okay the one I took that I had in Australia I didn't actually take it to Australia I took some threads to Australia and then I um, had accumulated threads when I was there because that's what you do you go to the sewing basket and you accumulate threads and so then I um, I did go and buy an inexpensive big box that I really, I'm going to use that one, um, that I really like um, to put all the threads in and I actually brought that home. I think I put it in my hand luggage because my threads are very important to me. If I lose my threads, I'm not happy. So I did put them all in my hand luggage. I was thinking I could use a wool. That would require me to get up and get the wool. So, you know, an Appleton wool or something like that. But I think I'll use this one. And I might use, I'm going to use six strands. I might use, a, you know, like a variety. I might even use uh, some other. No, I don't want six strands. I want it to be a bit thinner. So I'm going to do two. I don't want it to really stand out. I just want it to, to be there. And I could come back in with a few other shades if I want to, to give you the idea of bark. It's, I mean, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm hoping that it will be okay. I probably won't like it when I first start it. And you won't like it when I first start it, but I, I will persevere and then see how it, ha you know, how it progresses. If I, then if I really dislike it, I will have wasted a bit of time and pull it out and start from scratch. So I need, do need to catch that. Um, just gonna, oh, that's a blunt needle. I don't want a blunt needle silly let's see if I can get it into this Milner's needle that's a better one there we go so this is just going to be stitched in there I'll make sure at some point to catch it and this is going to amalgamate and lock in my so I'm couching over multiple multiple layers I don't want my I don't I think I don't want my stitches to go straight. I I am coming in with other colors I've decided right now. It is going to happen. I probably need to do them a bit another one in there. And probably another one at the bottom. I just go backwards and forwards and fill it in. 
I don't want to completely cover the wool underneath because that would defeat the purpose except that you would have a very nice raised trunk I am leaving little gaps because I as I said I am going to come in I might come in with a slightly lighter color here and there and a slightly darker color Have I caught that yet? Look at that, I've already caught it. What a mess. Glorious mess. Oops, and I've got, I'm kept pulling them in between, inside my lines, which I didn't want to do. I think that's going to be good. I'm actually liking it. So I'm going to continue on with that. I won't do any of this until next the next video, but I will finish this off. Um, and I will do a bit more work on here. I'm really liking that. I wasn't liking it before, but now if I put a little bit of the purple over here and I'm going to put some other little flower over here, I could do little white daisies, little knots or something. I don't know, or mix. I don't know. I've got to make, I've got to work it out. So I hope everybody enjoys this prompt. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a bird's nest. I probably won't because I don't think I'll fit a bird's nest on my tree. Um, I could put one down that's fallen on the ground. I might put a little one. Yes, I will. I'm going to put a little one. And then I'll have little bits of grass and maybe some little flowers here. Um, I'm going to, got to continue my little path once I get all my... Well, I continue. I might continue my path as well. Um, and then I'll have the leaves going over the path. Yeah, so I'm very excited. Yay. So I hope you enjoy that. I'm looking forward to seeing all your wonderful work. And um, possibly if some people had already done a tree, you could add a bird's nest somewhere. If you've done a bird's nest, you could add a tree. If you've done both already, maybe you have room for another tree. Or maybe like a topiary tree or a little shrubby tree sort of thing. So there's always, you know, like if you've already done it, there's always something else that you can do. Um, similar or alternative to the prompt. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.